All right, so right here is our new kayak to play with. That's the Old Town Topwater 120. So I rigged it up. Uh, we're gonna go take it out for a spin. Uh, we're gonna take it right over there. That's um, Snow's Cut. Uh, there's a lot of history around here. Um, to my striper nerds, uh, this was actually a pretty famous area for striped bass up until the 1980s. This Cape Fear region used to have a pretty big uh, spawning ground of stripers. Probably number four or number five in the country at one point. Don't think I'm taking this into some pond. The current can rip here up to four knots in some places. So um, I feel like this is just a good way to give it a feel for the first time. All right, so uh, we're gonna just start off with uh, two BSJs, bottom sweeper jigs, half ounce on here, and a one ouncer on here. I actually have not fished inshore since about, uh, I haven't been inshore in like over a month, honestly, so I'm gonna have to feel it out today. Um, it might be a stinker. I'm not dialed in on any fish right now, where any are. I'm just gonna fish what I think this boat should do real well, and that's just fish a lot of structure. So um, we'll start up with some bait, and then we'll move up to maybe some jigs. Just kind of see how the, fight, the day goes. This is a nice hatch, actually. It does keep bone dry, man. Everything stays bone dry on this. So we use that on Memorial Day, and I liked it. Uh, I think I screwed up. I think I have to install a paddle leash, and I didn't. Because I'm kind of an idiot. But uh. Yeah, we got plenty of jigs. We got some fiddler crabs. We got some bucktails. We got some gulp. Uh, let's see if we can complete like a slam. Let's do that. Let's do some slam fishing. Let's see if we can get a, the redfish sheep's head flounder black drum slam. How's that sound? All right. Okay, kids. Remember, don't do this at home. So I don't know. Should I do like the half? I feel like I'm on a pro angler. That's what the pro angler guys do. Yeah. Like half paddle. So you need the full paddle, I guess. All right, so the rudder is back there. Down she goes. This John. A little awkward, but we got it. I think we're ready, ready for battle here. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yeah. And that's our propulsion. I don't think anyone has ever seen me relax and fish. This is not serious fishing today. Today is chill. Yeah. How fun have I cracked the beer on camp? This is like a day off. We're just gonna look around, try to catch something, not get hit by a boat. Uh, let's go into Snow's Cut. See what's doing in there. Had <laughs> very, had very uh, bad luck in Snow's Cut every time I went in there. Rods overboard. Uh, I get my ass kicked by boat wakes, but it's kind of quiet today, so. Right now, at least. So let's go in there. Uh, yeah, like I said, this current rips through here, so let's see how we do against it. it took me a minute. I think I figured out what I want to do with those. In a nutshell, fishing in snow's cut right there. Three jet skis. And uh, yeah, like I said, you gotta drink a couple beers, get in the mood. All right, so. Fiddler crabs are actually my least favorite crab being there so fast and hard to handle at times. So here's what's nice about this. Look at that. Ooh, <laughs> this is what I wanted to do. All right, let's see what we can catch here. Man. This is probably just gonna fucking suck. Get up here, got him. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Try to wrestle him through the dock. Let's see what it is. Oh, a little black drum. That's my first fish on the old town. A little drum. Not too great of a start. One little dink black drum. That flounder I pushed, dropped at the boat was probably, probably like 16 inches. So I'm moving around now. Um, I have the bottom of the outgoing tide. Let's see what I can do. It's kind of how I expected today to go. That's why I've been not so much inshore uh, lately. But uh, we'll see. Oh, so here's a couple of things. We're getting our ass pounded by boat wakes all day here. That's important, right? Because uh, how it goes around here, right? Caught nothing so far. Nothing good, at least. Damn, I can't believe I haven't got a hit on here. 
Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. So yeah, you wanna see what that this is like, right? Because we're always in this. Pretty standard stuff. Nose first, right? Yeah, this thing does turn well. Damn. Whoop. Yeah, it rides these pretty well. I'm not crazy about this high center of gravity, but it rides that pretty well. The internet makes it look good. E so easy, huh? Here it is on a windy day, without too much prep work, without too much knowledge, just kind of winging it. And this is what it's like. Catch the big donut, and we get nibbled to death by croakers. If you got any real sir. Ooh, let's see what that is. Yeah. Oh, little specks. Hooray. That's it, that's the Carolinas. Inshore, inshore dink slam. That's the docks for you. Got ourselves a little speckled trap. Yep, all sorts of trash. That's a golden croaker. Pretty small one, but kind of everywhere. It's good with the bed. Tinker. John Skinner catches eight pounders. I catch eight inches, buddies. And if there's fish here, I'd have a blast doing this. This is like my jam, though. Shame the fishing's beat, but like this kind of dock fishing, this is what I'm good at. Really love this type of fishing. I say short, you say how short? Teen and a half. -er. That would be our second keeper if we landed our first one. Ooh, let's see what else we can do. Uh, Post Hurricane Florence, it's been real shitty around here, at least inshore. Uh, it's not as much life as last year. And last year I knew, didn't know how to fish for most of these fish. And this year I still don't know how to fish for most of these fish. But uh, last year I was lucking into some fish for sure. Let's get back to the kitchen, the kitchen, my house. And I'll talk it down and talk about it. I'm gonna break down what I like about this boat and what I really don't like about this boat. Nah, I'm all good, thank you. All right, so we actually took some notes. I really spent a morning getting my thoughts out on this boat. Um, so first of all, I, you should give Old Town some credit. Sending somebody like me this boat, knowing there's a good chance that I'm not gonna like it, and then I will reflect that back to the my audience um, and provide my real feedback about the boat. I'm kind of notorious for being a little, uh, you know, not too shilly when I don't like something. 
um, and I have a hard time at hiding that I don't like something. We'll walk through everything. So I've got a list of pros and I've got a list of the cons and some final thoughts. Um, this is the part of the video. If you don't give a shit about kayak fishing or kayaks in general, this is probably where you're just, yeah, the fishing part's over. This wasn't a good fishing video either. I understand that. Okay, so let's go through the pros. Uh, some of this I might be reading directly. I just don't want to miss some stuff. The boat's a rock, man. Um, it was sitting on my, my truck. It's like 90 degrees out right now. There's zero flex. It's... It is the most sturdy feeling plastic I've ever sat on. It's a weird way to phrase it, but um, my other kayaks in the sun, they start to feel soft. Um, this thing didn't feel soft. It felt like it was almost like fiberglass. It felt like I was on a boat boat. Um, and that's a nice feeling, having that sturdiness out of a boat, out of a kayak, for sure. I mean, that paired with the fact that it has a lifetime warranty, uh, it builds confidence in you. It feels like you're on a boat that's, you know, designed to be reliable and last you a lifetime. Um, that PDL drive is a monster. It's not a toy. It has a five-year warranty. It's, you know, listed as a maintenance-free system, which is good. I'm not terrible at maintenance, but sometimes I get really busy. I've gotten a lot better at maintaining my stuff this last year and change to have less failures. Um, knock on wood, it does not feel like a toy. Coming in at 20 pounds, that drive is an absolute monster. Um, so I think the reliability of the product is a huge plus if you're somebody who fishes a lot, multiple times a week. Um, so keep that in mind, really keep that in mind. So let's talk about the actual fishing of it, right? Um, so uh, the pros on how it fishes, what it fishes for, in my opinion, and what it does well. It's a great structure fishing boat. If I primarily fished around docks, inshore wrecks, and freshwater, obviously, I, I don't want to comment too much about freshwater because that's about like five to 10% of the fishing I do is freshwater. But if I was more of an inshore fisherman like I was back up north, I've been living in North Carolina for a year now, um, up north I would fish in the ocean maybe 10 days out of the year because of, there was just that the reasoning wasn't good enough for me to get out there all the time. Here I fish in the ocean almost 10 days a month. So it's a little different the type of fishing I'm doing. And Old Town knows that when they sent me that boat that I'm primarily inlet ocean, uh, some back bay. I haven't even been in the back bay since probably like early April. As soon as I got one big bluefish and couldn't find them again, I didn't go back in the back bays ever since then. So to me, it's primarily, I wish we had a good sheep's head bite in this video or black drum or something. It's awesome in that sort of environment. Um, it's precise. The pedal drive system, uh, that PDL, it really responds well to any kind of physical motion you're adding to it. You could feel if you need to back up, change your change your direction. I mean, the rudder is responsive. Um, it does really well in structure. If I was a dock fisherman for tog, sheep's head, I mean, I am to a degree for dock fishing, tog, sheep's head, black drum, uh, fluke slash flounder, uh, weak fish, those types of fishing this boat does really, will do really well at, in my opinion. However, I've done a lot less of that inshore, you know, dock fishing than I used to previously. Um, I like that responsiveness that drive gives and that instant reverse. It's nice. It really works well when you're in a tight situation and you're trying to catch a particular fish on a particular, you know, piling or whatever it is. So the next thing that's good. Uh, so, we talk, I talked a little bit about the types of fishing. Uh, it's a bone dry ride. Um, you know, I took a couple wakes over the bow, I took them over the side. It rides dry. No splash, nothing like that. I was bone dry after the day. It's comfortable and it has a really good layout. Like for just general angling, you know, overview. Does well. All that stuff. Really impressed. It was really fun to be in a different platform and get to really re-experience you know, fishing something different for once that I was controlling. Okay, a couple other things I just, you know, skipped over, forgot. Uh, one of the things that's pretty interesting to me and I really um, liked and appreciated that, the, I guess, the quality of the boat 
that there wasn't a drop of water in the hull at the end of the day. Um, took a couple bow wakes, whatever. Um, it was out there for five, six hours, uh, somewhere around five hours, and there wasn't any water in the hull. So another good thing. For my freshwater man, I'm not an experienced freshwater dude, man. Um, but uh, my experience goes to where my parents live, and that's up in the Finger Lakes region. Um, if I was jigging lake trout a lot more regularly and doing that sort of trout fishing uh, in that part of the country, um, you know, big waters. Cayuga Lake is a 35 mile long lake, um, that sort of stuff. Um, this would be my choice of boat again. Um, just because of the precision and how I fish those kinds of waters, I kind of want to get right on top of certain spots, right on top of certain fish, um, that kind of stuff. I really like the way that the drive lets you do that sort of stuff. Okay, so that was a lot of positive. And there's, I think for, you know, 90% of the anglers out there, um, this boat fits you really well. Um, I do a certain type of fishing that it does not fit me that well at, at the same time. So here's where my negatives are gonna, are gonna kick in. My biggest drawback from it, it's the weight. Fish three to four days a week if I have good weather, right? So three days a week I would average. Um, the weight, man. Putting that thing up on the, my truck bed is a lot of work. I don't tailgate. I'm from New York City, man. Everyone who I know who's tailgated in New York City has gotten rear-ended. Wilmington's got a decent amount of traffic, and it, it's something I thought about, and it's still something also I thought about the fact that I can probably still get rear-ended. In combination with that weight of 89 pounds, it feels heavier to me than the Outback. Um, I haven't weighed either one of these boats. I can lift that out back onto my hull elevator. I can't put this old town onto my hull elevator. It is too wide. Same thing that the 2019 Outback is too wide for me to put on the hull elevator. I like that hull elevator system. I've been used to it. I've been using it for four years. So the other thing is a lot of my beach launch, the launches I use, I've got to trek through a lot of beach replenishment sand. That thing does not have an easy handle. It's good. It would not be ideal or even possible for me to get through some of this beach replenishment nonsense. I mean, the, and then of course, yeah, sure, I can drop in at a boat ramp some places, but there's a lot of areas, man, I would never use it. Okay, so let's talk about the drive. The drive is easy to use, it's responsive. It does take more torque to get going. It physically, I physically feel it more when I'm really covering that distance. That motion and that prop system, it takes more out of my legs. That's what I noticed. And to get to that speed of the, of the other drives and maintain that consistent speed, it takes a lot more out of me. And I cover a lot of miles some days. I go back and forth. Man, I really, if I had a boat, my gas bill would be awful. It really would be. I cover a lot of distance. I go back and forth. Um, sometimes I stay, stay, stay in one place all day, but usually I don't. So um, the physical aspect of it, it's also kind of a drawback for my type of fishing. I just like to cover a lot of distance, then ping pong and go back and forth. I try my absolute best when I'm out there on the water and trying to put out something uh, make it as good of a video as I possibly can some days. The next biggest thing besides the weight to me again is um, the high center of gravity um, that's not adjustable and I understand that has to do with this PDL drive being different. Man, before Hobie had the, the new um, seats they used to have like a one that was like so, just soft padding and we used to just lean against the Hobie carts and I never cracked a hole doing that, but whatever. Um, long ago, we used to just lean against them, and that, to me, was actually pretty comfortable. And the other thing is, having that adjustable center of gravity, when shit's curling behind me, that's like nasty in an inlet, we're coming back in, I am a fair weather fisherman. I don't like going out and slop. Sometimes I have a bad habit of overstaying my welcome. Especially if, you know, I'm trying to get the day together. It looks like I can't make it through my surf or it just looks like a crap day of fishing from the get-go. I don't bother. But sometimes things happen when you're out there on the water and conditions deteriorate. Being so high up and taking that beating, it makes me nervous. It, 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 I'm not confident in that sort of environment. 
Um, and to not be able to adjust that, to me, is another big drawback. I can only imagine what it's like to have between the, the 89 pound, 87 pound hull, the PDL drive, and being in that surf zone and coming in. A lot of times when I hop out of my kayak, I don't ride the, the boat onto the beach. And we're talking like a one to two foot surf, right? I'm not going in waist surf ever. And I hop out and I try to grab the, the front of the boat and, and a wave pushes the boat into me and it hits me. And that, that does hurt. And sometimes, you know, I, I mistime it and screw it up and I've gotten caught in between my boat a lot. I could only imagine what that would do to me physically. So, but this is small details for a very small percentage of the anglers out there at the same time. I don't want to devalue this, the quality of this kayak for the majority of guys fishing. It's, I'm just trying to keep it objective as possible. And I'm not trying to, you know, I'm sure the guys at Old Town listening to this aren't liking to hear these, these things that I'm saying. But at the same time, I don't think they should be too surprised that I'm just not too into that side of it. For a big boat, it paddles well. It tracks well when I paddle it, and it, it, it takes on speed like uh, like better than my, my Outback, sure, let's compare it. Um, so I do like how it paddles uh, better than my Outback for a big boat. You know, it doesn't, it's not a paddling boat, but you know, you run aground, you get shallow, you gotta break out your paddle. You know, having a, a, a boat that paddles well for its size, that's never a bad thing. So going forward, um, just to wrap it all up, um, I unfortunately do not have the luxury of having an armada of kayaks leave, you know, laying around. Um, I wasn't sure. I don't use. I have a Hobie Revolution 16, which maybe I used five to six times last year, and my angling has changed, and I'm still adapting. Um, the Hobie Revolution 16 was great for striper fishing um, up north. It was great for false albacore. Here I get drawn to a lot more vertical jigging, which I hate the Hobie uh, Revo 16. And the fact over here, there's so many more species to target that I need to overpack some days. Um, especially since some days in mind, I have one thing in mind and then everything 360s on me. And I hope I have what I needed out there. And I've been, <laughs> every time I think I figure it out, I don't. I like, I love this fishery because it kicks my ass and humbles me so many times. But at the same time, I, I try to adapt and figure out what new skill or techniques. It's it's interesting as, as a kayak angler, I would say. Um, but that being said, you know, if I could keep this boat around, I would, right? I just don't have the space. So it's gonna, it's gonna have to leave the, the fleet. Um, it would probably see just like my Revo 16 and why am I gonna keep the Revo over this is the weight. I'd rather just have that Revo around um, just in case something happens to my Outback and I'm at, down and out with it for a month and I need to use another boat, the Revo will fill that niche and I can load it up every single day and I won't have that problem. If I, if I had to rely this as my on my secondary boat, um, that weight would really be a problem loading it for me personally. That's really the main, main reason. That being said, this boat would fit like 20% of the angling needs perfectly. I have in North Carolina right now as the angler, I, I guess I've become or transitioned into, and probably 70% of the angling of where I came from up north. When I fished the Hobie Worlds tournament years back, they put us in pro angler 12s. I would definitely like this boat much more than the pro anglers I've been in. Um, I like it more than the Hobie Compass I've been in. So I like the way the angling style and how it provides the fishing experience. I do. So, so keep that in mind as well. This was a long rant and I'm sure this was useful for people really caring about the kayak uh, experience or kayak purchasing. It's, I think for a lot of people it should be on their radars. So you won't see it on me um, just for a lot of practical reasons going forward. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, Old Town took that risk to put me in it and for me to say what I want to say about it. We'll see what the future brings, but based on how I have my arrangement right now, maybe for another year I'll have this exact same arrangement of 
pickup truck, you know, cart, putting on the rack, etc. Maybe next year I'll move and have, you know, a trailer or a bed extender. Who the hell knows? But as of right now, and I can't keep it around for that reason. So, it's what I got, yo. Enjoy.